What's going on guys, today we're going to talk about when is going to be the best time to start studying for the SAT. The quick answer is you need to get started as soon as possible. Now you can go watch some cat videos, but if you want to find out why, stick around, we're going to go over a couple reasons why. So when it comes to studying for the SAT, many people wonder, hey John, what's the best time to start studying? Because I'm not sure if I've learned everything yet, I'm not sure if I'm starting too early or if I'm too late. So the best answer is to get started as soon as possible, and there are four reasons to consider why. Four reasons. Okay, so here's the first reason. First reason is that school gets harder. So you start high school, freshman year, not too busy. Sophomore year, maybe a couple AP classes and junior year is just where all the AP classes come in and it's just gonna get super hard. And thing is, SAT is going to take a lot of time for you to study and start um, having a lot of practice and it's gonna really take time to raise your score. So school's gonna get harder, it's, fast, it's easier for you to start as soon as possible and start working on it when you're not too busy in your freshman or sophomore year. So my optimal recommendation time is going to be about sophomore year, okay? So here's the second reason. Many people wonder, hey John, what if I have not learned everything yet? So let me tell you the quick thing is you have learned everything. So you have learned everything you need to solve all the questions on the SAT. So when it comes to SAT, there are three sections. So first section is going to be the reading section where all you have to know is how to read, understand it, and then answer a couple questions, and that's it. Second section, which is the writing section, all you need to know is a couple grammar stuff and use that critical thinking to find out what your answer is. And you probably learned all that grammar stuff, I don't know, elementary to middle school, and they don't teach you to in high school, so there's no reason for you to wait until junior year. Okay, so third thing is a little bit complicated is the math section. So let me tell you a little bit about math section. So when it comes to math, it covers anything from simple addition, adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, all the way up to algebra two. So it covers from elementary all the way to algebra two. And there's a little bit of trick. You know, that Sokotoa stuff, that crazy thing where your teachers make you to make you memorize all of that. Make sure you memorize that because you're going to need that. So there's a little bit of trick. Um, Sokotoa stuff, we'll get into that later. But if you have really paid attention from elementary to algebra two, you really learn everything you need to solve um, all the SAT math questions. So if you're wondering um, if I'm ready, if it's the best time, yes. If you have completed math up to algebra two, you are set, nothing to worry about. Reading and writing, you already know everything. Reading, you know how to read. Grammar, you know how to speak proper English, you're set. Math, Algebra 2, you're set, okay? Third thing to consider is, is that SAT, it takes time. Guys, I see so many students that ask me, hey, can I raise my score maybe two, 300 points within the next three months? And I just look straight into their eyes and say, hey, it's not gonna work out. It's gonna take more time. See, not many people know that SAT actually takes a lot of time. Yes, you did learn everything you need to solve all the questions, but it's gonna take time because SAT is all about practice, okay? So it's gonna take time. That's why you wanna start as soon as possible when you're not too busy, when you have a lot of time. So get started around sophomore year. If you're a freshman, I will start dabbling into it and trying to see if it's the right thing for you, okay? So here's the last reason. Last reason for you to consider is going to be, what was it? Oh, your current score and your goal, okay? So before you look into any of these three things, make sure you check, uh, make sure you look into this, make sure you pay attention here. So what does it mean by current and goal? Well, current just means your current score and your goal means what score you need. So let's say, I don't know, let's say my score right now is, I don't know, let's say I, I didn't really do anything about SAT. So let's say I have 1050 right now. That's going to be my, current score and let's say I want to go to I don't know some XYZ school in my area and their average SAT score is going to be I don't know 1200 then right there is going to be a 1500 point gap oh my head is covering sorry so 150 points gap that you have right so to raise 150 points um, from 1050 is really not going to take too much time that's why you, if, I, if I were in this situation, if you're something like here, then I would just wait until, I don't know, junior year, then 
start working on a little bit of math, a little bit of reading and writing, and you should be able to raise your score. But honestly, if I really were you, I would just get started my sophomore year because as I mentioned, you already learned everything and you have more time in your sophomore year, year than in your junior year. So just get started early, maybe finish before even junior year starts. And that way you don't really have to stress about SAT or any kind of stuff like that. It's the best feeling when every, all of your friends are just sitting there stressing about SAT and trying to do some practice exams. You just sit there like, yep, I'm done. Okay. So if your current score is 1050, going for 1200, don't really have too much, uh, too much thing to worry about. Start your um, junior, if not sophomore year. But let's say I am trying to go to Harvard and Harvard requires about 1550 plus score. And that's going to be about 500 points that I need, to, I need to raise. That's a lot of points I need to raise. So that's not something I can raise overnight. It's gonna take some time. It's gonna take me at least a year or two to raise that much score. That's why you wanna get started as soon as possible. So before you think about SAT, um, before you do any of this, before you consider any of this, make sure you find out what your current score is and what where your goal needs to be. Without that, you're gonna be just in a whole lot of mess. You're not gonna know where to go, how much work you need to do, and when you need to when you need to even start. So make sure you identify your goal first. Identify the goal, identify your current score, and see how much work you need to do and how much time you're gonna need. And maybe talk to some of your upperclassmen and see how they studied, how much time, how much time they took, and see how much, try to estimate how much time it's gonna take for you to study as well. But my recommendation is start in your sophomore year okay S start as soon as possible if i have a kid i'm only like I'm, I'm i'm i don't have any kids yet but if i have a kid and if my kid is i don't know eighth grade and they did math until algebra two i'm gonna i'm gonna even start them in eighth grade because it's gonna it's easier to start early and get it done early than to start late and try to finish late because you're gonna be under a lot of stress and stress is not a good thing. I'm sure you know all those all-nighters, it's not fun, okay? So, if you're wondering when you, need to, when you need to start studying for the SAT, start as soon as possible, okay? So let's summarize, because that was a lot of information. So first thing is, um, if I wanna, uh, when should you start studying for the SAT? Start as soon as possible, four reasons. First one, school gets harder. That means there's going to be less time that you can um, devote to SAT. Second thing is, you have, you have already learned everything. You don't have to wait until your junior year to cover everything. You already know everything. So just start now. Third thing, it takes time. It takes a lot of time. I can tell you that because reading section alone is 65 minutes. And to do that tens and 15 different times, it's going to take a lot of time. So make sure you start when you have a lot of time, which is freshman sophomore year. Okay. So last thing is identify your current score. Identify your goal. Identify where you're at right now and where you need to get to and trying to see how much time you're gonna need. If the gap is not too big, you can maybe push it off until junior year. But if your gap is pretty big, start early. Okay? All right, does that make sense? Great. So those are four things to consider to see when you need to start, and I'll see you guys on the next one.